Well, good morning, everyone. I'm Stephen Parry. I'm the Commissioner of Public Safety for the City of Providence. We are here uh, to share with the community, you know, our plans in preparation when there is a verdict in Minnesota in the Floyd uh, case. We've been monitoring this uh, for quite some time. We continue to monitor with our partners at the state and the federal level as well. We are confident there will be a reaction, whatever that may be. Um, we can't predict what the jury will do, but whatever the jury's decision and whenever that is, I can assure you the Providence Police along with local police in Rhode Island and the state police and the, the FBI and our federal brothers and sisters have discussed and will have a plan. So whatever the reaction is here in Providence, we just ask those who have a reaction emotionally or otherwise, do it in a peaceful manner. And we're there to work with them so they can react to it uh, favorably or unfavorably so that people are safe and it's expressed as they have their right to express their either support or outrage with a jury's verdict. Uh, we will do everything to work with uh, a group that will be coming out, we're sure, uh, to keep them safe and keep our businesses and people that reside, work, or visit the city of Providence. Uh, we, are, we are hopeful and continue to be hopeful that it will be peaceful and we call upon those who wish to demonstrate and protest to be peaceful in your expression whichever way it may be. We have no credible information that regardless of the jury's decision that there's planned either riots or violence, but that, that could change and we continue to monitor that with everyone both locally and regionally. Uh, so I'll ask the Colonel to speak uh, because he's been on some calls uh, regionally, uh, nationally, uh, most recently, and we're doing as much as we can to create a peaceful reaction, whatever that may be, uh, to the uh, verdict out in Minnesota. Colonel? Thank you, Commissioner. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for covering. I am uh, Hugh Clements, Chief with the Providence Police Department. As the commissioner identifies, we've been on countless calls with our partners, law enforcement partners, and community partners in organizations that we work with day in and day out. So around the country, uh, in cities around the country, and including in this state, people are on edge. Uh, everyone is bracing for what might come uh, with a verdict. And we just don't know what that is. We believe in the justice system and uh, we'll await as the days in this week in this week go on when the verdict comes out but we are prepared i've been on uh, in countless meetings countless conversations with our partners both law enforcement and uh in community uh and as well we believe strongly in the constitution first amendment right for free speech free assembly the right to protest and as you know, we've had several in this city. I think the record speaks for itself. Our response has been good, very good. Uh, and we encourage peaceful protests, and we encourage a proper response. Uh, but as well, we know they're fluid. These events are fluid. They've happened right here. Uh, and with that, you know, we encourage peacefulness, not lawlessness. And where there is lawlessness, uh, the Providence Police, we're always prepared to take uh, the appropriate steps to keep people safe, to keep property safe, and to take fair, firm, uh, and impartial measures to keep people and property safe. Uh, but look, we're hopeful that there will be a, we know there will be a reaction. We're hopeful that will be peaceful, certainly in this city, and in this state, but we're prepared. 
you have any particular questions, we'll be glad to entertain them. Otherwise, yeah. our message is believe in the system, the criminal justice system. It's in the jury's hands right now, and whatever their determination is, that's our system. And violence doesn't get us anywhere as a country or as a community. And we ask that violence not be a part of an emotional reaction. Uh, Questions? Can, yeah, Commissioner Perry, could you just uh, go through the specifics of how you guys are preparing? I mean, just six months ago, people were hurling glass bottles at you guys, fireworks were going off, arrests were made, you know, it spread throughout the city. What are you guys doing to prepare specifically? So, you know, <clears throat> we're not going to give you everything that, you know, we're monitoring. But look, we reach out to our communities, our community leaders, and anyone that wants to protest and wants to have a conversation. We initiate conversation and we try to get to a place where it's peaceful. I understand the anger six months ago and 10 months ago, and the anger is still there among the community. We understand that. But throwing bottles and bricks and objects at police officers doesn't get us anywhere as a community. If you look at our history, violence doesn't get us, there, get us anywhere to any resolution. I get it's emotional and it's raw, but violence has no place in any civilized country. And we ask that they don't resort to that, <clears throat> make change in the way we know how to make change in this country. So you spoke to specific groups, like did you talk to like Cobb X and talk it out with them? Just what was the response? Look, we've, we've always had open communications with every group that's organized, and some are willing to have a conversation, others are, do not, and, and that's fine. We try to find ways and to have open communication and dialogue because that's the safest way, whatever their intent is. Uh, they, they take the streets. It's dangerous to take the highway. We ask that they do not. Sometimes they have in the past, but if they communicate with us, we can keep them safe. And there will be those that don't want anything to do with police, but at, a, at 10 o'clock at night during darkness, walking the streets of, of Providence is dangerous for them. And we don't want to see anyone get hurt. We'll be prepared, you know, we'll have the resources both on the state level, the federal level, and the Providence Police. We'll be prepared and we'll react to what we need to. Our goal is safe protest and we'll, we'll provide the resources to achieve that goal. Sure. I mean, we're always communicating to our officers, providing them what's happening across the country. And you're right, they're human beings as well. And there's emotions there. We're the professionals. We're there to provide safety. The men and women of this police department know what their goal is and their mission. And that's what we'll do. And we'll set up conditions in which people are safe and allow them to express their emotions in, in a peaceful way. We get, we get the... We get the emotions uh, locally and nationally as well. But again, uh, burning buildings and creating riots gets us nowhere as a community or a country. And <clears throat> getting to resolve those issues and communicating, whatever that may be, that's the way we'd like the reaction to this trial to be. So let, let me ask the Colonel, just because he speaks with the officers more frequently than, than I, to get their perspective and more importantly, to give them the guidance about 
what may happen here emotionally, uh, locally, and what our goal is. So yes, a very good question. And you know, so obviously a lot of training, a lot of conversations with our colleagues around New England, uh, specifically Boston police. Some of these incidents that occur may happen a wave before they get to mid-sized cities like Providence. We've seen some of uh, these events take place in larger cities in Boston. We have a great relationship with the Boston Police Department and others in New England. But it's not only training, it, it's experience. And, you know, we, we're pretty experienced when it comes to voices being heard and assemblages in this city for years. You know, we've had, a, it, it, it's a college town. We've had a lot of uh, groups, small, medium, and large, express their opinions. And we just ask that it be done peacefully uh, and, and with everyone's safety in mind. We have several different avenues of spreading that message to the workforce. Uh, we're a big workforce, there's many roll calls, there are many, there's 62 separate units. So we, we find ways to get the message across to the workforce and it, look, it, it's been said, police officers uh, are concerned as well around the country and it gets us nowhere when violence is uh, exacted on anyone, any human. And uh, so we're prepared. We think we're in good shape. We serve on many boards in this community. I was in co on uh, conversations this morning with some of the board members, uh, not in this board in particular, but I know an article that was done yesterday. Uh, is a good response. We, we have really good, if not great, relationships with our community leaders, community partners, and we've gotten a lot of support in this Providence Police Department, and we appreciate it. And uh, I think it is our uh, greatest concern is to keep this community safe and to keep the structure safe and the, uh, the business community safe. I was going to ask about businesses. Are you guys having conversations with them, like telling them to board up? Or, you know, what are you telling businesses? No, we're not, we're not telling them to board up. And, uh, you know, information is fluid. As information ramps up, if there's an uptick, would we? Yes, we might at this point, no, but we do have certainly conversations. We're up in uh, several of these business districts daily, uh, Broad Street, the West End, Atwell's Avenue, the East Side. So look, we, we have a lot of uh, challenges in this city when it comes to law enforcement. But as, as it pertains to protests, uh, you know, that, that's a separate type issue. And we're most concerned with safety and protection of property. Yes, yes. And again, we serve on all these boards throughout the city, so it's like a natural conversation. It's not like all of a sudden we're going to call uh, Amanda because she owns a business downtown. You know, we already know her. Chief and Commissioner, um, I'm sure both of you have had a chance to watch at least some of the trial that's been going on. I'm interested in what your perspective has been in watching this. As experienced police officers, what do you think about what's happening? Do you have an opinion of what you hope the jury will, will find? So, so look, correct. I think the testimony went in like I thought it would. And from minute one, when that incident, the footage was shared, it was shocking. It was wrong. We all knew that. It was criminal. And here we are in a criminal trial. Uh, however, I haven't paid attention to every piece of information that's been put into that trial. Uh, to be honest with you, we're busy on a day-to-day -day basis here, but I, I trust the system. I really do. I trust the justice system. Uh, I know the commissioner does as well, and, you know, we'll see where the verdict goes. I haven't broken it down, uh, you know, to a uh, granular degree, the testimony, so... I mean, we saw what we saw in the beginning and throughout the trial, and we'll, we'll see when the verdict comes out. Yeah, so we took a position shortly thereafter and condemned what we saw. We only saw, you know, what the public seen, you know, in, in uh, putting a knee on the throat of a person that's been subdued and handcuffed. Um, I've watched you know, as much as I could, the trial and the defense as well, I still condemn the actions 
of that officer that has no place in our profession. Um, despite, you know, everyone has the ability to defend themselves, you know, in a court of law, and that's what he and his attorney is doing. But I, I continue to condemn that behavior. That was excessive use of force that has no place in our profession.